Chapter 10. Beneficial Outcomes for Humanity in the Smart Technology Era. Part 3. Various Potential Outcomes for the Future of Civilization. As mentioned in the previous chapter, Max Techmark in Life 3.0, Being Human in the Age of Artificial Intelligence, discusses the three stages of life on this planet as biological evolution, cultural evolution, and technological evolution. Simple Biological Life 1.0 is unable to redesign either its hardware or its software during its lifetime as both are determined by its DNA and change only occurs through evolution over many generations. As Life 2.0 has a strong cultural dimension, it can redesign much of its software as one can clearly see with humans that can learn complex new skills, see for example languages, sports and professions, and can fundamentally update their worldview and goals. Now the big question is if humans in the smart technology era will drive us towards Life 3.0 a technological stage of life where life can dramatically redesign not only its software but its hardware as well, rather than having to wait for it to gradually evolve over generations. Do we want this future? What will the impact of this be on humans? In the economic singularity, artificial intelligence and the death of capitalism, Callum Chase describes four potential scenarios for the post-economic singularity that he envisages, which includes maintaining the status quo without any significant changes, idealistic full employment, a social collapse, and the Star Trek economy. Whereas a social collapse falls into a dystopian category, the Star Trek economy describes an abundant moneyless age without scarcity and supported by smart technology. It doesn't regard the status quo scenario where there is no further significant innovation and minimal smart technology impact on civilization to be a plausible one. Some of the key arguments for this scenario include the apparent deceleration of technological progress, the fact that we have not seen any significant improvements from a traditional productivity and GDP statistics perspective, and that the Industrial Revolution seems at this point in time to still have had a greater impact on the economy and civilization compared to the current information revolution. However, this is debatable, given that we are still early into the 21st century, with the impact of fusing multiple exponential smart technology impulses still to play out more significantly across most sectors, this scenario does indeed look unlikely. Although the full employment scenario is more plausible, AI-driven assisted, augmented and autonomous technology is on a course to have a significant impact on the job market. One of the key arguments for this scenario is what Callum calls the reverse Luddite fallacy that says that as automation has not caused long-term unemployment in the past, it is not likely to have that effect in the future. But that does not hold water, as whatever happened in the past does not necessarily give any assurance for what will happen in the future. Another argument states that as our demand for products and services are for all practical purposes unlimited, there will always be full employment. However, as AI-driven machines and software solutions will increasingly assist in producing better products and services in quicker and more cost-effective fashion, we will likely see it contributing more to development and delivering capacity to meet the demand. Callum Chase mentions various examples of where people will likely be still engaged on the job front, which includes collaborating and complementing machines with respect to our creativity, instinctive aptitude and imagination, utilizing the AI-driven analysis outputs in higher level cognitive tasks, do tasks that require empathy, People might have bias for some handmade human-produced goods and services still being produced or offered. Be involved in entrepreneurial ventures and activities, producing artistic and entertainment-related goods and services, or activities that we cannot even imagine today. So although we might not have full employment, cognitive automation will likely not lead to full-scale enduring pervasive unemployment. The scenario of social collapse is also a realistic dystopian one, with civilization's fragility illustrated many times in the past, with the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Persians, the Romans, the Maya, the Inca, the Mughal dynasty, Cambodia's Khmer Empire, the Ottomans, and the Habsburg monarchy, to name a few. Although our 21st century civilization seems robust, 
social collapse and other dystopian scenarios can still be easily brought about by fractures in society that can be the result of combinations of many factors that range from technological unemployment, climate change, migration, food shortages, blunders, misinterpretations or confusion, to totalitarian control, troublemakers, populist movements that lead to fascism or even the gods, superclass with superior physical and cognitive capacity and potentially living longer versus the useless class as described by Yuval Harari in Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. On the other end of the spectrum, we have utopian scenarios which are imagined societies with highly preferable or idealistic characteristics and where its citizens do not have discomfort. However, depending on how they are defined, they could also potentially be stationary, boring and dull with no problems to solve or opportunities to pursue. Also, a world that might be perfect in some respects might be dreadful in other dimensions. Many utopian scenarios do not necessarily present a good outcome for humanity, of which some are also linked to strong AI and superintelligent systems. Instead, Callum supports a protopia, which futurist Kevin Kelly describes in The Inevitable, understanding the 12 technological forces that will shape our future as a state of becoming rather than a destination, and a process where things are better today than they were yesterday, although only a little better. He believes in continuous small incremental progress and thinks that any society supported by smart technology will have some problems. Kevin also thinks that we have already arrived in Protopia, but that the future states of Protopia are more difficult to visualize, as new technologies create almost as many problems as the ones that it solves, and gives us new options to tackle new problems with slightly more positives than negatives. Callum Chase believes that a Protopia might unroll in four stages which he calls a plan, big welfare, Star Trek economy, and collectivism. He further colors this in as he outlines three snapshots of a possible future in 2025, panic averted, 2035, the transition, and 2045, at which point we have an abundant Star Trek type of economy where we have avoided social displacement at scale. In his unforecasting description, he emphasizes the impossibility to predict the future but also the importance of making plans to avoid not giving us a chance to achieve the outcome that we want. He envisages AI-driven smart technology helping to drive cost of production of goods and services to zero, energy costs being appreciably lowered, transportation costs significantly reduced with minimal human labor involved, the production of food mostly automated, the quality of housing appliances and furniture being upgraded on a continuous basis, People across the spectrum have enjoyable lives, state is providing income for its citizens, and the wealth gap notably closed. A protopian outcome is likely one of the better scenarios to strive for, especially one that also has characteristics such as decentralized governance with abundance across the spectrum, direct democracy with a more local and human community-based economy, an empathic society with meaningful work and relationships. AI-driven smart technology helping society thrive and assist in running communities, smart towns, smart cities and smart nation-states in more optimal fashion, allowing for a hybrid setup where communities choose to live in full AI-supported zones or one that does have minimal to zero AI-driven support and a shift to biosphere consciousness. Eric Drexler, inventor of nanotechnology and senior research fellow at Oxford University's Future of Humanity Institute, has recently discussed the idea of a paratopia that involves a resolutely goal-aligned future where everyone's lives can be enormously improved by ensuring that all parties get very large gains when looking at the resource pie as it pertains to AI, automation and space resources. In such a scenario, there will still be people with larger access to resources than others, but no one would have shortcomings, and the outcomes for everyone is massive. He envisions that a strongly Pareto-preferred world is made possible by having at some point in the future rapid growth in AI capabilities, vast expansion in productive capacity, and benign and effective security systems. 
Eric advocates that we should change our understanding and perception from just working on policies that give credible outcomes to one that also explores potential goals and policies for what is plausible and realistic. He discusses the concept of an Overton window, which defines the range of what can be discussed within a given community at a given time, and what can be discussed and taken seriously and regarded as reasonable changes over time. If we work within the Overton window of plausibility, Eric sees the following as credible or plausible. Extensive applications of high-end AI, strong scalable automation, large-scale, low-cost renewable energy, resource efficiency, asteroid mining, and greater defensive stability. According to Eric, Pareto-Topian meta-strategies involve the need to understand realistic and credible capabilities, understand and accommodate diverse concerns, and to intensify and expand the circle of conversation. In a paper, The Future of Humanity, Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at University of Oxford and the director of the Future of Humanity Institute, discusses four families of scenarios for humanity's future, namely extinction, recurrent collapse, plateau, and post-humanity. Plateau falls into the above-mentioned status quo category and can, according to Nick, have two possible trajectories, where the one is just current status quo and the other one is representing a growth, followed by an indefinite plateau. Both recurrent collapse and extinction belongs in the dystopian category, whereas recurrent collapse involves a cycle of perpetual repeating collapse and regeneration. Extinction entails either involving into one or more new species or dying out as a species without purposeful prolongation or replacement. Post-humanity can be classified into the extreme side of utopian, protopian or paratiotopian group where Nick defines the post-human condition to have one or more of the following attributes. Life expectancy which is more than 500 years. A significant part of the population has cognitive capacities more than two standard deviation above the current human maximum. Almost full control over the sensory input for most people nearly all of the time. Human psychological suffering becoming infrequent experience. Population size of more than one trillion persons. And any change of magnitude or deepness comparable to any of these characteristics. In a Lex Friedman podcast on superintelligence, Nick mentions that we should take full advantage of the abundance that can be brought about within a strong AI-driven utopian scenario. He thinks that it will open a vast space of possible modes of being, dramatically expand material and resource constraints, and open up a larger design and option space for ourselves that we have ever had access to in the history of humankind. He urges that we need to fundamentally rethink what we ultimately value and think things through from first principles to determine the best possible outcome for humanity. In Max Tegmark's book, Life 3.0, Being Human in the Age of Artificial Intelligence, he explores a range of AI aftermath scenarios as AI becomes increasingly advanced, which effectively can be classified into dystopian or utopian categories. The dystopias include conquerors, where AI takes control and removes us by a possibly incomprehensible and indefensible method. Descendants, where AIs replace humans and give us a dignified exit. Zookeeper, where an omnipotent AI keeps some humans around in zoo-like fashion. 1984, where AI progress is indefinitely restricted and research prohibited by a people-led Orwellian surveillance government. Digital dictatorship, where we have governmental surveillance and smart technology-based control of citizens. Reversion, where AI research and applications are prohibited by going back to a pre-technological society. And self-destruction, where strong AI is not developed due to humanity pushing itself to extinction. The utopian scenarios include libertarian utopia, where humans, cyborgs, uploads and strong AI systems coexist peacefully due to property rights. Egalitarian utopia, where we do not have a superintelligent AI, but humans, cyborgs and uploads coexist peacefully because of property abolition and guaranteed income. Benevolent dictator, where everybody knows that the AI runs society and enforces strict rules, but most people view this as a positive thing. 
gatekeeper where technological progress is forever impeded by a strong AI with the goal of interfering as little as necessary to prevent the creation of another superintelligence. Protector God where essentially omniscient and omnipotent AI maximizes human happiness by intervening only in ways that preserve our feeling of control of our own destiny and hides well enough that many humans even doubt the AI's existence. And an enslaved God, where a strong AI is confined by humans who uses it to produce unimaginable technology and wealth that can be used for good or bad depending on the human controllers. There have been many discussions and even debates about where we are heading in terms of utopian versus dystopian scenarios. One such debate was a few years ago between Josh Hall and Hugo de Garris at an artificial general intelligence conference on whether a strong AI will result in an utopia or war. Josh took the position that the rise of AI levels will create a utopia for humanity where Hugo took the opposite position that the rise of godlike, massively intelligent machines could possibly be catastrophic for humanity, leading to the worst, most passionate war humanity has ever known, using late 21st century weapons, killing billions of people. In Hugo de Garris's book, The Artelect War, Cosmos vs. Terrans, a bitter controversy concerning whether humanity should build godlike, massively intelligent machines. He describes two opposing perspectives on whether humanity should or should not build strong AI systems, which he calls artilex or artificial intellects, which can eventually overshadow human intelligence by a factor of trillions. He thinks this question will dominate global politics later in this century, where we will have the cosmos with a more cosmic perspective that supports building them, as opposed to the Terrans, as in Terra, which means the Earth, who are against building them. There is actually also a third major philosophical group, which he calls cyborgs, which comes from cybernetic organism, that want to become artilects themselves by adding artilect components to their own brains. Some of the arguments for the cosmos include the big picture of advancing intelligent life as part of the next evolutionary step and spreading it throughout the cosmos, exploring and extending our boundaries, which is in line with our human nature, being like a scientific religion in harmony with modern scientific knowledge, building artilect gods, unlocking unstoppable and tremendous powers of problem solving, abundance and wealth creation, and generating further economic and military momentum. The motive of the Terrans is fear and avoiding risk as they argue that we need to preserve the human species, not wanting to face differences with cyborgs and artilects being rejected by the cyborgs or artilects, wanting to avoid the unpredictable complexity, the cosmos in consideration, and the first strike time window to react against the cosmos and cyborgs before it is too late. The arguments for cyborgs include becoming artilect guards themselves and avoiding the cosmos Terran clash. Hugo also describes how such an artilect war can heat up in a sequence of events starting with nanotech revolutionizing neuroscience, neuroengineering uniting with neuroscience, artificial brain technology creating massive industries, development of an intelligence theory, continuous improvement of artilects, raging species dominance debate and forming of political parties, the debate turning violent through assassination and sabotage, the Terrans striking first before it is too late for them. Cosmos anticipating the first strike and are ready. And late 21st century weapons leading to a giga death war. Now that is what I call a pessimistic dystopian scenario that we definitely want to avoid. The Future of Life Institute expanded the conversation through a general public survey to get the general public's views on super intelligent AI and what society people would prefer given the utopian and dystopian scenarios as defined by Max Techmark. The Future of Life website provides the results of the first almost 15,000 people that responded to the survey. Most of the respondents preferred an egalitarian utopia, followed by a libertarian utopia. Other less popular utopian scenarios, from preferable to undesirable, include respectively protector god, enslaved god, descendants and gatekeeper.
On the question of who should be in control when a superintelligence arrives, most survey respondents said both humans and machines, followed by humans and then the machines. To the question of having a conscious AI helper with subjective experience, most of the respondents want the AI helper to be conscious so that the system can enjoy having experiences, followed by depending on the circumstances, and not wanting it to have consciousness. They did not want to feel guilty about how they treat it. In terms of what a future civilization should strive for, most people prefer minimizing suffering, followed by maximizing positive experiences, another goal that they sympathize with, and picking any reasonable goal. A very large percentage of the respondents want life to spread into the cosmos. In Life 3.0, Max Tegmark also lists properties associated with these AI aftermath scenarios, some of which correspond to these survey questions, and checks for each scenario whether strong AI exists, does humans exist, are humans in control, are humans safe, are humans happy, and if consciousness exists. One can add more properties to this list, such as are humans productive? Does humans have a meaningful existence? Is there abundance? Do we have an equitable democratic society? And have we reduced the wealth inequality? If we consider human control, the only utopian scenarios where that is a possibility seems to be egalitarian utopia and enslaved God cases, whereas that should be the case in the status quo, full employment, protopia, and Pareto-topia scenarios. Although humans might be safe in the cases of a benevolent dictator, egalitarian utopia, and possibly gatekeeper, protector god, and enslaved god scenarios, humanity's happiness is likely going to be mixed in all of the utopian scenarios. Protopia and Pareto-topia scenarios look to give us a better chance to not only engineer a safer and happier future world where humans are still in control for as many people as possible, but also where there is abundance, humanity is productive and has a meaningful existence. Our democratic society is more equitable with a diminished wealth gap and better at being an empathic civilization with collective sense-making. A blog post that discusses likely outcomes over the next few decades mentions strong AI and bioengineered world as potential good outcomes with the proviso that the design and application are well controlled to humanity's benefit and the development pace is not stifled. All the other outcomes seem to be very dreadful and distressing, such as increased domination, manipulation and quelling of citizens in secret or disguised fashion, military conflict by accident or design causing mass destruction, rapid acceleration of climate change, or extraterrestrial events that might have unforeseeable timing. In an article about the best-case scenarios for the future of humanity, George Borsky outlined some scenarios, which includes the status quo discussed earlier as well as a number of far-out utopian-like scenarios, which he calls a bright green earth, Watch over by machines of loving grace, to boldly go where no one has gone before, inner space, not outer space, eternal bliss, and cosmological transcension. A bright green earth future is one where people live in harmony with the planet's ecosystem, animal suffering is eliminated, weather can be controlled, and all our energy requirements are fulfilled, as one would get with a Kardashev Type 1 planetary civilization that can use and store all of the available energy of its planet. The Kardashev scale measures a civilization's level of technological progress based on the energy amount they are able to use where a Type II stellar civilization can use and control energy at the scale of its planetary system and a Type III galactic civilization can control energy at the scale of the whole galaxy where it is located. The scenario where humanity is watched over by AI systems is similar to the benevolent dictator, protector god or enslaved god type of scenarios mentioned earlier. The interstellar colonization scenario implies having technological capability to travel to other planets and start colonizing other solar systems via self-replicating spacecraft, von Neumann probes, generation ships, or digital intelligence systems. An example of the futuristic inner space scenario would be mind uploading to enormous supercomputers that can provide various simulated worlds and imaginative experiences that go far beyond our current physical experiences on Earth. 
The eternal bliss scenario involves creating a virtual hedonistic heaven on earth, the removal of suffering, and the maximization of endless pleasure from a physical, psychological, and emotional perspective. The cosmological transcension scenario is even more speculative and includes, for example, advanced intelligent life, guiding the continuing development of the universe or moving our collective intelligence into a cosmological zone with black hole-like efficiency and density through the migration and shrinking of human civilization into smaller increments of matter, energy, space and time.